One of the most common struggles that athletes come to us with is being able to deal with pressure of any kind so they can break free of their anxieties and perform to their full potential. So many times you struggle as an athlete to really understand pressure and that causes you to underperform, underachieve, and it makes you feel uncertain and anxious. Now look, I've been there myself as a professional athlete and my company helps so many professional and youth athletes get over this conundrum of dealing with pressure. All you really need to do is follow our simple three-step framework to get there. You've gotta be able to change your beliefs, build your certainty, and change your behaviors so that you can manage your emotions. In today's video, I'm going to teach you the three things that we do with the pro athletes and youth athletes that we work with here at Moliteum to help them be able to deal with pressure, break free of their limitations, and perform to their full potential. Hey, Matt Calderoni here, co-founder of Moliteum, where we help athletes discover and reach their full potential by building their resilience. And since 2015, we've helped just over 5,300 athletes, ranging from the youth to professional level of sports. Now, the reason I started this channel is because I used to be a professional athlete. I struggled with this side of performance, and I don't want you to do the same. Now, this video was inspired by an athlete I was actually working with this past week. She's a tennis player who felt the pressure of having to perform. She was a prodigy as a child. She did really, really, really well. But then as she started to progress, she kind of started to lose it and she started to feel the pressure mounting where she had to get more wins and she had to perform well and she had to make her parents happy. And when she ended up coming to us, there were so many different things that she was performing for and she really forgot about what got her there. She felt so much pressure, it clouded her judgment. So I used this three-step framework with her. I helped her understand exactly what pressure was and changed her beliefs around that. She could understand what skills she wasn't trusting. And then finally, we were able to help her change her emotions and behaviors so that she could manage those emotions in performance and didn't have to feel that pressure. Now, the reason I share this story is to help you understand that this framework actually works. You just need to apply it the right way. So. Let's dive into it so that you can start using this framework now so you can get rid of that pressure and unleash yourself to perform freely. So the first thing we need to do before anything is help you understand what pressure really is because so many athletes kind of label it but don't really get it. Pressure is when you perceive a threat to be happening around you and it causes you to feel uncertain about yourself, out of control, or just simply unsure about the situation that's in front of you. Even if you have the skills that you need to be able to be successful in that situation, it clouds your judgment. Now, before you go beating yourself up, you actually have to understand that this is a very normal response for your brain. Your brain is designed to scan the environment, know if there's any threats and protect you from it. This is how we've evolved. But in the athletic setting, pressure really isn't that bad. Here's what's really happening. Like you can see on this graphic here, pressure often comes from focusing on the things that you can't control as an athlete. And the one thing that every athlete focuses on that they can't control are the results. And these results can come in any way, shape, and form. This result can be wanting to impress a coach. This result could be wanting to be one of the best players on your team. This result could be simply scoring a goal. But the point is, when you're feeling this pressure or out of control, you're focused on the things that you can't control. Think about it. The athlete that we were working with was way too focused on trying to impress her parents. She was trying to, you know, get back in the win column. She was trying to make up for all this lost time. She was focusing on the things that she couldn't control. And as a result of that, felt out of control or that anxiousness that most athletes feel. Now, the reason that you start to freak out when you start to pay attention to those things you can't control is because you're seeing the environment and in your brain, you're perceiving a threat. And when you perceive a threat, you actually go into what's called fight or flight mode. It's where your adrenaline spikes, your heart rate raises as a result. Maybe you start sweating, maybe you get nauseous. But the point is your brain tells you you're in a threatening environment. And because of that, because you can't control what's going on, you start to feel that pressure and you throw out everything that you know and start pressing that red button. And that is not what we want to do. So we need to stop doing what everybody else does and what the common therapeutic approach is, which is to you know attack the situation you're feeling pressure about. And instead, we need to do these three things to get to the root of that pressure fill and rip it out. The first one being you gotta change your beliefs around pressure. The second thing being you gotta understand and build certainty behind a skill. And the final thing being you've gotta change your behaviors around emotions so you can manage those emotions in pressure filled situations. So with that being said, let's dive into the first part, which is changing your beliefs around pressure so you can break free and run to the root of it instead of just dealing with the surface level of it. Now, before we dive into changing your beliefs around pressure, let's understand what a belief is. Very simply put, a belief is is just an understanding of what's caused you pain or pleasure in the past. If it's caused you pain, you often push that off. You want to avoid it. You do everything in your power to avoid that threat. If it's caused you pleasure, you have no problems with it. You actually don't even think twice about it. So for example, if in the past you've had a coach depend on you and you didn't come through the way you wanted to or you didn't perform the way you wanted to, you then hold on to that belief as something negative, aka you start to feel the pressure to perform. Or maybe in another example, you're coming up to play a team that you didn't have success against in the past and you're starting to feel that pressure again build up to have to perform and come through for your team, regardless of what it is, when you're feeling pressure, it's because you often have a belief from the past 
that you need to rip out and deal with. And this is where we kind of take our approach a little bit different here at Moletium than the majority do. We don't want to deal with a behavior on the surface level. We actually want to get to the root of a behavior. So like you can see here, a root of the behavior is the pain that you're avoiding. We need to solve for that. What most people do is they solve for the effect of the behavior or how you're acting, AKA, I start to feel nervous when I think about having to perform. We don't need to deal with the nervous side. We need to get to the root of the pain that you're avoiding. And I will tell you this from working with as many athletes as we have, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because you don't trust the skill that you have in your toolbox to be able to work for you in performance. So to keep it very simple, the way that we help most athletes deal with this pressure is that we actually just get to the root cause of the skill they're unsure of so that they can dominate. Because think about it, if I'm an athlete who's super sure of myself and super sure of my skills, I'm not worried about the coach putting pressure on me. I'm just gonna focus on what those skills are, AKA I'm focused on the actions that drive results and that's why pressure goes down. If I'm an athlete though that doesn't trust myself and I don't trust my skills, then I'm gonna start paying attention to that pressure the coach is putting on me. I don't trust myself to get the result, AKA I start focusing on that result and I feel that pressure. So we need to change your beliefs here and this is how simple it is. Stop focusing on the nervousness part and let's get to the root of the skill that you're unsure of. That's our next step. So now that we've changed your beliefs around pressure, let's get to the root cause of it. All you really need to do is ask yourself, when coach puts pressure on me or when I feel like I need to impress somebody or da 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 da, what are the skills that actually got me results in the past? That's all you need to ask yourself and you're gonna nail it down to three skills. Once you understand what those three skills are, you're going to rate them on how well you're using them out of 10. The ones that are rated below an eight, you now know what skills you simply need to build certainty behind. So let me give you an example. This tennis player we were working with, I said, so what did you do in the past that brought you success? And she goes, Matt, there are three things that I've always done well that have brought me success. My serve, my forehand abilities, and of course my slicing. I said, great, let's rate those out of 10. So I think she came out with a rating of like a five and two sixes or something of the sort. And I said, there you go. We can see exactly what it is that you're unsure of and that you're not trusting yourself with. So when you get to those big moments, it's not that you're feeling the pressure, it's that you're not trusting yourself. You see what I'm saying here? The root cause. So all we did is apply this simple framework that I'm about to give you right now that you can use as well to be able to solve for those issues. So here's the first thing you need to do. You need to visualize those skills perfectly. The second thing you need to do is you need to practice those skills on a daily basis. And the third thing you need to do is study film on those skills on a daily basis. Here's the beautiful part. Linking here right now in this video, you can simply click a video on how we go in depth about this. So I don't need to explain it all right here. I'll also link it down below to make sure that you have the video down below. And all you need to do is watch that video and sub it in for this step. There's like PDFs, audio tracks and everything attached to it. You just need to click that link follow that video, and then come back to this one. What I suggest though, watch this video through and then go deal with it after, simple. Because once you build that certainty behind this skill, here's the last step that you need to follow and it's changing your behaviors so you can manage your emotions. Now to manage your emotions or this pressure that you're feeling, there's actually two things you need to do or two times you should change your behaviors so that you can manage this pressure. The first one being is the pre-performance side, which is where you need to calm yourself down before a game so that you don't feel that anxiousness, which is natural going into performance, that nervousness, that excitement. And the second side to this is that you actually need an in-performance system so that during a performance, you know exactly what to do when maybe you start to creep away from that you know, focus and you can get right back to it. Let's talk about them. So to manage the nervousness or excitement that you feel before performance, which is natural for any athlete, even the pros that we work with feel that nervousness or excitement, you care about something, which is why you feel that way. Simply follow this little checklist that's here on the screen. Number one, you wanna make sure you do four rounds of box breathing. Number two, you wanna make sure that you're visualizing what you need to do in a game. And number three, you wanna pick two things to focus on. Let's break this down really quick. The box breathing, which you can find on YouTube if you literally just type in box breathing for athletes or box breathing tutorial, it'll come up, do four rounds of it. This is gonna help you just calm down, center yourself, and you'll get rid of those nerves almost instantly so that going into it, you can think clearly again. The visualizing part, the second part to it, if you did go to that video before that I just suggested, you'll have gotten an audio track to be able to do mental reps. Simply listen to that and sub in the same skills that you're using before a performance or before going into a game and right after your box breathing. This is gonna help you get certain of yourself and help you build that focus that you need to be able to go into a performance and do what you need to do. And then the last part is you need to pick two actions to focus on. 
The reason you're gonna pick two actions to focus on is because this is all you need to do in the middle of a performance. So many times athletes go into a performance thinking about 20 million different things. You just need to think about one or two maximum. So the tennis player, for example, all she focused on wasn't even technique, wasn't anything like that. She said, I'm just gonna focus on putting the ball exactly where I want it in the court. Boom, that's an action she can follow, right? So instead it's hit the ball to that corner. It's that simple. Instead of, oh my God, I gotta make sure my hip is this way, my hand is that way, my shoulders this way. That's way too much. Pick two things to focus on and just keep coming back to it. So all she did was, even if she made a mistake, she texted me about it. She said, look, all I did was go back to that one thing I needed to focus on, which was putting the ball in the court. And she goes, funny enough, Matt, I ended up winning the game because of it. And I said, yes, that's exactly it. And that's what you need to do as well. As an athlete, we're focused on the one task at a time like the tennis player. She focused on just making sure she took it one hit at a time, put the ball where she wanted to every time intentionally. But the key to the focus is you need to be intentional. Most athletes aren't intentional in performance and because of that, their mind is all over the place, their focus isn't controlled, and then they're actually not performing to their full potential. Instead, they're just kind of going through the motions. We don't want that. So two things you need to focus on, keep it very simple. Now in performance, it's a little bit different. And there's something we need to understand, which is called a habit loop in order to be able to use it. Now, like you can see here on your screen, there's four things that every habit consists of. The first thing is that there's a cue. The second thing, there's a craving. The third thing is a response. And the final thing is a reward. A cue is what sets you off. This is a physical or a mental thing that could get to you. For example, maybe a coach yells at you and that cues you. The second thing then is a craving. The craving is the pain you want to avoid and the pleasure you want to gain. So if a coach sets you off from yelling at you and the pain you want to avoid is not disappointing that coach, then that's the craving that's there. Now the response is really where we need to put our focus into. The response is the thing that you do as a result of responding to that cue so that you could satisfy that craving. So if a coach yells at you and you don't want to let them down, your response might actually be to try to be perfect because you don't want to make that coach angry. And then the final part is the reward and it's what you actually want to solve. It's the, the desired result you want. And it could be to not make that coach angry. So think about this habit loop for a second. You've got an individual who gets set off by a coach who yells. They want to avoid the pain of making that coach angry. So what they end up doing is try to play perfect as a response, but the actual reward they're getting to try and make that coach happy, it's not happening. Because you know as well as I do, anytime you're focused on the things you can't control, it doesn't work. So what we actually need to do is this. We don't have to go through that whole habit loop. All we need to do is understand the thing that sets you off, what your current response is, and change your response. So for example, if a coach yells at you and that's the cue that sets you off, the current response might be to try and play perfectly. What you need to understand though is that that never works because you can't control that. What every athlete needs to do whenever they want to try to impress somebody, this is a fundamental truth we tell even to our pro athletes making hundreds of millions of dollars a year. The only thing that truly impresses anybody is focusing on the things that you're good at. And then you do those things and they get impressed because of it. So instead of trying to play perfect when a coach sets you off, you can't control the cue, you need to understand, okay, well, when coach yells at me, that's just a sign for me to get back to the three things or two things or my two focuses that I need to get locked into, the things I'm good at. That's how simple it is. With this tennis player, we recognize for her, whenever she saw an opponent come into the court that she didn't have success against in the past, that's the cue. Instead, we just treated that cue and changed the meaning behind it to say, hey, you actually just need to focus even harder now on putting the ball where you want. And that's how simple it was. So we got her to step back, take a deep breath in, and she refocused. So what I highly suggest for you is, as you're adding in this new response, you want to add in something physical with it. So it could be where you see someone squirt the water on their face. It's a common one for athletes and then you get back to your focus. It could be the deep breath like our tennis player. Keep it simple though, don't make it complicated. The key is to recognize a cue that sets you off and to change the response so you can manage your emotions better. It's really that simple. And there you have it. You now have the three-step framework that we follow with every athlete we work with so that they can decimate the pressure they're feeling and not just manage it. You don't want to manage the pressure, right? So. If you got value from this video, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell. It helps us keep bringing you free content. And of course, it helps us understand that you're actually getting value from these videos. Now, if you do wanna work with us, there's three options that you have down below that you can click. First option, number one, you can apply to work with a one-on-one -on -one Moleteum coach. This coach is somebody that's gonna be able to tailor an experience specifically for you so that you guarantee the results no matter what, and you also get your own private coach. The second way is to work through the Moleteum Pocket Coach on your own. This has brought so many different athletes a bunch of success so far. What it is is a 365-day day-to-day habit-by-habit plan that allows you to just log into the app, we train you in a video, and then you use those habits and build those habits over the course of a year so that this becomes a lifestyle for you and a blueprint and not just something you're hoping about. Or finally, 
If you want to work through this in a free setting on your own, simply sign up for the Mala Team Insider. It's an email that comes out weekly where we give you free content, update you on when our latest podcasts and YouTube episodes are coming out, and let you understand what deals you can take advantage of within Mala Team if you would like. With that being said, make sure you decimate the pressure, dominate it, and unleash your full potential. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.